Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. A 31 year old male presented to ER with complaints of shortness of breath, uh, facial and neck swelling since one day following a bout of cough. On initial 10 second assessment, airway, mild hoarseness of voice was present but no gurgling uh, sound or no pulling of secretions, patient can complete a sentence. Uh, breathe, breathing, respiratory rate was 20 per minute, saturation 95% on room air, air entry bilateral equal and bilateral occasional V's was there. Uh, and during uh, the examination, there was a crepitus found over the neck and upper chest. Uh, at this point of time, we have started nebulization with salbutamol uh, with O2 since uh, there was occasional V's. Uh, coming to circulation, BP was 130 bar 80 millimeters of mercury. Pulse rate was 100 per minute. All peripheral pulsations equally felt. Uh, CRT was less than 3 seconds. Disability, GCS was 15 by 15. Pupils equal and reacting to light. Uh, exposure, ephebrile. Coming to history, a 31 year old male who is a non case of reactive airway disease on alternative medications during the attacks, uh, alternative medications only during the attacks, presented to ER with complaints of shortness of breath along with swelling over the face and neck following a bout of cough. He had low grade fever and shortness of breath since two days. There was history of sudden onset of bout of cough followed by swelling of face and neck. There was also history of hoarseness of voice and he was immediately taken to nearby hospital x ray neck showing subcutaneous emphysema. No history of any chest trauma, any intractable vomiting, chest pain or palpitations. On examination, patient was conscious oriented, no palarectocinosis clubbing lymphadenopathy. Local examination, diffuse tenderness was present over bilateral neck, no local rise of temperature, crepitus palpable bilaterally over neck from inferior border of bilateral mandible to third intercostal space on chest extending to anterior border of <coughs> bilateral trapezius. Laryngeal crepitus was present, carotids were palpable bilaterally. Respiratory system, uh, uh, no, air entry was bilaterally equal with occasional Vs. Uh, see, other systems were within normal limit. See, one thing that I wanted to uh, tell you here, laryngeal crepitus or crepitus over the larynx. So, that is, both are different. Crepitus over the skin of larynx, you can get in subcutaneous epithema. Laryngeal crepitus is seen in laryngeal fractures. So, it's a direct airway trauma. Then we will get the, that is the classical history is the laryngeal crepitus. When you say laryngeal crepitus, it is laryngeal fracture. Okay. So, what you would have felt would be the whole emphysema could have extended uh, towards the anterior aspect of the neck also. So, that is subcutaneous emphysema only. Okay. So, when you are using the terminology, the, uh, you have to be very careful. So, that gives a clue that this patient has got a laryngeal trauma. Yeah, skin so, over. Ah, so it's a, actually the skin over the larynx. So, uh, it's a 31 year old male uh, who has come to the ED with a uh, sudden onset of, he had a sudden bout of cough, known case of asthma, small airway disease or uh, he has come with acute onset of breathlessness yes. and chest pain was there? Um, initially there was chest pain then. Uh, okay. So, now his primary complaint is breathlessness or the subcutaneous emphysema. Uh, hoarseness of voice and this edema. Hoarseness of voice and this edema is his presenting complaint. So, uh, it's a very clear and straightforward thing. So, what you will suspect at this point of time? There is some subcutaneous emphysema. So, what does that subcutaneous emphysema mean to you? It can be a uh, small alveolar rupture or pneumothorax. So, th there is some airway connection to the skin. That is very clear. So, where it is happening, we are not very sure at this moment. There is some connection from the airway to the subcutaneous fascia, sub subcutaneous area. So, as a result, you got subcutaneous emphysema. So, the most common reason being a pneumothorax. Uh, it is the most, one of the most recent following a trauma and all will be a pneumothorax. But here, you don't have any history of pneumothorax. Trauma is not there, but there is a possibility of a spontaneous pneumothorax also. So, but the air entry was bilaterally equal. So, the pneumothorax part is out. So, somewhere there is an air leak that has not produced a pneumothorax and but the patient has got subcutaneous emphysema. So, here there is a history and acute sudden violent cough. So, that is the one of the precipitating factors. The small airway, the bronchioles, the alveolar can rupture and the air leak can occur and resulting in subcutaneous emphysema and later on it can extend to the mediastinum even to the pericardium and we call it as pneumomediastinum or pneumopericardium. So, that is the clear di uh, diagnosis that we have. Now, uh, when we should suspect this in an ED? So, it's not very classical, we have got a subcutaneous emphysema. Every time you won't get a subcutaneous emphysema, it is difficult to get. Once you get a subcutaneous emphysema, it is easy to diagnose. So, when you will suspect, 
am I thinking of pneumo mediastinum? When you should come up, okay, this can be a possible pneumo mediastinum. So, how will you uh, come to that conclusion? When will you suspect? That is my question. For that reason, just look at the risk factors, age group. So, this age group patient coming with sudden onset of this, this symptoms with this history. I need to think about this. So, that is the question that I have asked you. So, what is the age group that is commonly affected? Young age in Young male one. age group around the second, third decade is the most common presentation for a pneumomediastinum. Uh, then, uh, any uh, risk factors like any uh, bronchial asthma mm. or uh, any <coughs> non case of uh, any bullous lesions in the lungs. Okay. Um, so then you are suspecting pneumothorax. Okay. Uh, so what? What I am telling simple pneumomediastinum without mm. pneumothorax. Um, Do you have discussed no? Uh, uh, mm. Any um, drug. Uh, Any recreational uh, drug usage, most importantly, hookahs, cocaine. cocaine, vaping, these are all the risk factors that you need to consider. So, what is happening there when you are doing vaping and all, you are taking a deep valsalva yeah. maneuver. So, that valsalva maneuver can increase the pressure and there can be alveoli rupture also. So, that is one of the classical yeah. history and again with the patient with small airway diseases like asthma and all, they are also have got a risk factor. So. When you will suspect this, a young male age group without any major comorbidities is coming to ER with an acute onset chest pain. Acute onset, one of the differential diagnoses that you need to keep in is pneumomediastinum. Chest pain, you don't, you have taken an ECG, you have ruled out an ACS, you don't see anything major on auscultation and acute onset of chest pain and you are seeing sometimes they will present with breathlessness. So, these are the two classical symptomatology that they will come to the ED and then you need to background history check you need to do. But majority of the time they will never uh, give a history of this recreational drug use or anything. But here there is a history of an violent cough. So, what is basically cough? Uh, explosive expiration against a closed glottis. So, once it is become violent, more more amount of energy, barotrauma chances are very high. So, as a result, you can have a small alveolar or rupture. So, that is it. So, it is very clear he had an event, probably that event would have triggered or we are not very sure whether there was any other risk factor involved in this. So, these are the classical risk factors that you need to ask in for. They might deny the history, but uh, these are the possible risk factors that you need to keep in your mind. Maybe other thing is that uh, when they are sniffing it, they, they will deeply take it inside. A deep inspiration they will do. That all can precipitate. It's not as one time they are doing. They are repeatedly doing this. So, hookah usages, this wrapping and all. There is high chance that they can have developed any of this trauma uh, at any point of time resulting in pneumomediastinum and pneumopericardium. Now comes the, you have had a suspicion in our mind, okay, it can be a pneumomediastinum. It's basically we have ruled out other things. And young male, we are not suspecting, you are not thinking of any costochondritis, you are not thinking of any other disorders. Then you are, uh, usually uh, when you have marfanoid features, what is the other differential diagnosis that you need to think? Iotic dissection and uh, very rarely MVP. They can also come with uh, an acute onset of presentation in ED. So, the young male coming to the ED with chest pain. These are the differentials from the routine things that we need to keep in our mind. And uh, uh, very rarely something called as Borehave syndrome. What is Borehave syndrome? It is due to violent, uh, uh, intractable vomiting mm. during esophageal tear mm. uh, causing the air to leak out. So that is another, uh, but here there is no history of okay. any uh, vomiting or anything. And Borehave syndrome, they can present sometimes with lung abscess. They can sometimes present with lung abscess, very rarely because there was a rent and the patient continues to take feed and it would have gone and could kind of anaerobic infection, they can come with a lung abscess. So, uh, whenever you are having any suspicion why this patient has developed a pneumonia, that is when we need to think, okay, whether I need to do a CT, CT chest is enough or CT neck is required. So, whenever you have doubt in this mind, so I think two, three months back, we had a patient who got admitted in our ICU with a probable lung abscess and we were suspecting a Borehave syndrome and uh, maybe at that time uh, doing an endoscopy won't be enough but CT neck and uh, CT uh, chest can be done to look for any rent. Whenever you are having some suspicion of an probable connection between the esophagus like a fistula formation and all those things whether a Borehave syndrome would have happened and it would have led to this. That thought process should come in your mind. So 
young male borehaus syndrome can happen in any, any group age group now coming to the clinical features we have sent regarding the symptomatology what okay. are the signs that you will be able to elicit uh, patient will be tachypneic mm. and uh, but tachypnea tests are clear usually in pneumomedia cell test will be clear yeah. when you have pneumothorax that's a different entity then uh, any edema can can be seen subcutaneous emphysema as you have seen in this patient crepitus can be, can be uh, ex elicited then uh, if there is underlying any uh, in infection we can get uh, by findings for that okay um, usually that's it hardly you won't be able to get any other clinical signs and then comes the investigation so majority of the time a good x-ray will be more than enough chest x-ray is more than enough to uh, for us <coughs> to uh, diagnose this and uh, uh, we have diagnosed actually by taking an x-ray we will be able to see a good uh, subcutaneous emphysema and what are the other x-ray findings that uh, you will be able to see hard borders can be seen okay and uh, in young children there will be uh, spinnaker sign that means the uh, thymic lobe can be upward and outward uh, pushed. pushed out uh, and it is also not a angel wing sign and then uh, there will be um, neglerios v sign that is the air be, uh, in between the um, descending thoracic aorta and between the left uh, hemi hemi diaphragm and then continuous diaphragmatic sign and then uh, ring sign that will be the right pulmonary artery around that basically uh, everything that the uh, structures in the mediastinum will be more prominent in the mediastinum so the most important mm -hmm. thing what I, I will say that sharp heart border so when you are able to see clearly able to elicit a sharp heart border Sometimes you might be able to say pneumopericardium also can be mediastinum can be associated with the pneumopericardium also so what group of patient we commonly see this pneumomediastinum which group of patients you leave alone this young fellow coming to the ed what else you will be what else group of patient you will be able to see a pneumomediastinum that can be an accidental finding in one of your chest x-ray for a critically ill patient inside your icu so who you are ventilating for an ards who are ventilating for an ards with a high peep <laughs> ventilation and suddenly you're taking an x-ray you're able to see a sharp heart borders and everything that is one of the reason is pneumomediastinum so pneumomediastinum usually can be left alone majority of the time like a ventilator associated and you need not do an ice but if there is a pneumothorax definitely you need to treat that but routinely it can be left alone and uh, that can be part of your uh, ventilation because of your high peep strategy there can be some alveolar rupture and pneumomediastinum and even pneumopericardium you might be able to see so that is in the icu setup but when you come to the ed perspective is what we have said now an x-ray chest x-ray will be good enough for a diagnosis and you have suspicion in your mind then you can go ahead and do a ct whether you need to do, look for any connections or any other suspicion a ct might help definitely it will help in diagnosing a pneumomediastinum so in primary investigation of choice will be more than enough is a chest x-ray now let's come the management aspects how will you uh, treat this patient uh, most commonly we manage is uh, uh, my conservative management okay uh, if it is uh, um, the, we have to treat the cause of the pneumomediation if it is pneumothorax uh, management the if it is bore how is there a surgical and then standing everything uh, and most probably means most commonly conservative management conservative management you need to give o2 um, whether can we give oxygen to this patient when a minimal pneumothorax we can be used to say you give o2 because absorption will happen faster you need to nick down the uh, subcutaneous emphysema so if it is becoming visibly large and it is causing significant obstruction to the airway causing compression then you can put nicks over the subcutaneous emphysema and let the air out so if it's a minimal subcutaneous emphysema just leave it alone it will get absorbed by its own just conservative analgesics will be more than enough and primarily as you said if there is any wheeze you treat that wheeze if there is any infection you treat that and look for a pneumothorax and ct might help you during that time and uh, usually it's a self resolving condition but pain will be significant so you need to give good analgesics morphine and all you need to give that and uh, uh, there, there is any chance of it occurring again yes there is a high chance there can be recurrence pneumomediastinum for the same group of patient who develop this so you need to be vigil and you need to tell him to avoid these activities whatever be increasing the intrathoracic pressure negative intrathoracic pressure you should ask him to avoid uh, explosive coughing and all those things if any recreational agents you need to tell that so uh, what happened to this patient ultimately uh, this patient actually we had taken a uh, chest x-ray showing a um, sharp heart borders no pneumothorax was there and he was proceeded with cct neck and chest uh, it shows diffuse subcutaneous and intermuscular plain edema uh, in anterior and bilateral aspect lateral aspect of neck extending into infrahyoid neck spaces and also in retropharyngeal space 
and it is it was extending into axillary region and inferiorly to pectoralis muscle and chest showing pneumomediastinum with air in pericardial space extending up to GE junction okay um, and all along the anterior chest wall uh, but uh, and upper abdominal sections no pneumoperitoneum and he was also done in esophagoscopy so it also only multiple after ulcer in D2 and no esophageal injury was seen so he was put a Riles tube during the esophagoscopy but he was not willing to continue that so and he was discharged on conservative management. Actually Riles like, tube was required it okay, is not required. No esophageal injury. Not okay. Uh, what what else you have to tell? Uh, that is the uh, management of in uh, Borehaus syndrome. Mm. You can just discuss. Uh, if in CT scan or esophago, uh, esophagogram, there if there is pre perforation or contained perforation. The first important thing, suspicion. As I told, when you will suspect this. So that is the most important thing. You have yeah, intractable or, vomiting. Or intractable vomiting. Mm. And if coming with uh, chest pain and then uh, breathing difficulty and if there is subcutaneous emphysema, then you have to uh, suspicion of Borehaus syndrome. And uh, CT scan or esophagogram, esophagogram showing pre, free perforation or contained perforation. If contained perforation, only NPO, uh, nasogastric tube and uh, total parallel nutrition. If free perforation, if it is a surgical candidate, we can uh, uh, propagate, means, uh, uh, do with surgery. And if it is early, that if less than 24 hour and the underlying esophagus is normal, primary closure can be done. And if there is diseased esophagus, resection should be done. And if it is more than 24 hours, diversion and exclusion. And if it is a not a surgical candidate, uh, we can uh, initially uh, proceed with uh, the standing. And uh, if it is um, successful, then we can uh, remove stand remo removal can be done. And if it is not successful, and if there is ongoing sepsis, then we have to do a surgery. And if um, okay, so that is regarding your borea syndrome. So the take home message will be. An acute chest pain in a young adult coming to the ED. One of the differential that you need to keep in your mind is pneumomediastinum when as said with the risk factors and what are the other common uh, differentials that we need to keep other than the ACS and all those things. ACS, yes, we will suspect but mostly you need to think about aortic blood vessel and very rarely vasculitis. This all Takaisu arteritis. This all can sometimes present with chest pain, breathlessness. All this presentation, a typical presentation can come. And MVP, very common thing is MVP. Uh, we used to do a lot of young males. Suddenly, first episode of uh, uh, they are just coming and you are evaluating, you are finding an MVP. That's one of the causes that you need to keep in mind. And other infective causes like pericarditis, myocarditis, associated features, you need to keep that in your mind. One of the differential pneumomediastinum, which is a simple diagnosis with a chest x ray. Only thing, once you suspect pneumomediastinum, with that eyes, you need to look at the x-ray. Otherwise, we will miss it. Very easy to say, uh, but we can miss that. So, we need to have a suspicion in your mind whether I am I dealing with pneumomediastinum. With that vision, you should look at the x-ray. Then you will be able to elicit. Okay. Fine. Thank you.